ever gotten a splinter in your hand or your finger? It can really hurt. Right? It can, if you don't get it out, it can swell up. It can become infected. I mean, it can be awful. The reason I ask for that, I grew up as a carpenter's son. My dad was actually a sheet metal mechanic with the Air Force. <clears throat> but in his part time, every weekend, he did carpentry work. He had a about a four hour commute every day to get back and forth. So during the week he couldn't do it. So every weekend we would do this. We'd get up in the morning, have breakfast, and go out to the workshop. His workshop was in a barn or a small garage, and there was a window on one side and a burn barrel. And we would cut and glue and mold and shape pieces of wood as he made things, and then we'd throw the scraps out the window. He made uh, flat bottom John boats. He made porch swings, lawn chairs, bookcases, you name it, he could make it. And because we were not very rich, all of the wood was very precious to him. He had to pay for it. Uh, and so he was real careful about how it was used. My job was to go outside. Mostly I would help him cut and shape and glue the wood. But my main job was to go out and put the trash in the burn barrel. And I would stack up all of the scrap that he threw out the window, and then he would ask me, I need a piece of two by four this long, or I need a eight by 10 piece this big, or I need a piece of plywood, half a sheet of plywood, whatever he would need. I would go out to the scrap pile and go through it and find whatever piece he needed. Boy, I got splinters. A lot of that wood had knot holes, nails, screws, splinters, split places. It's just terrible. And I'd have to go through and find a piece that he wanted to fit his specifications. I'd take it back into him, and he would do amazing things with it. Um, he could, he could, just, you would not recognize the wood back after he got through with it. <clears throat> but I had to, job of finding all, all the stuff in the scrap, whatever he asked for, to take it to him. And Jesus is kind of like that. He's a carpenter. He grew up a carpenter's son, too. And he is the ultimate carpenter. And he's making things. He uses the precious wood that he's purchased to make things. But sometimes he has places that he needs a scrap to repair or to add to it. Just like my dad used to call me out the window to bring him a piece of, of wood. Jesus does the same thing. He's got scrap that's out there that he does not want to go into the burning barrel. It's, it, even though it's scrap, it's precious to him. And he can use it. He can do amazing things with it. Our job as Christians today is to go out and find those scraps for him and bring them back to him. So he may send you out to all kinds of difficult situations. You may get splinters in your hand dealing with people that he wants back. But we need to do it. Because he can take the splinters out. He can heal our hurts. So think about <clears throat> that. And just be aware as you run into people, there are people who have uh, illness, have family problems, who have uh, doubts, who have all kinds of sin in their lives, and they are scraps, and they're just laying there in a pile somewhere. Let's go get them and bring them to him so he can make amazing things out of them. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, <clears throat> he took bread and a cup. He took the cup, the bread, and he broke it. And he said, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat. In the same way, he took the cup. And he said, this is my blood poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you eat this bread or drink this cup, 
do it in remembrance of me until I come back again. Let's drink the cup. Let's pray. Lord, we just ask that you heal us, that you comfort us, strengthen us, give us vision, sight, to recognize those people around us that are scraps that need to be brought into your workshop. We just pray that you will continue to, to uh, minister to this church, bring people in here each week that need to be brought back to you. And we just uh, lift all these things up to you in your precious name. Amen. Oh, and if you're a scrap that needs a hug, I'll be over here after the service.